uh, now now there's some sound uh, so today we are finishing Ephesians um, and we began last week in chapter 1 of Ephesians and and we said that uh, verse 3 and 4 of chapter 1 acted as a outline for the whole book if you will that the first three books of uh, the first three chapters of Ephesians acted as this outline uh, showing us what God has done in and through and uh, for us. And in light of that, chapters 4, 5, and 6 say, well, then how should we live? Um, Paul giving us this identity in Christ and what God has done for us. And then now, how do, does that play out within the community, within the church? Um and so I just want to give you real quick uh, an overview of the whole book. Um, we're going to shoot right through it. Uh, if we take a look at Ephesians 1, we see sort of the um, big idea here is that God has blessed us with spiritual blessings. He sealed us with his Holy Spirit um, as redeemed children of God who are and will be saved. Um, chapter 2, God has transferred us from the kingdom of the sons of disobedience into his kingdom. He's um, brought all believers together as one people um, who are being made into a temple of God. <coughs> Excuse me. In chapter 3, um, God has reconciled us to himself uh, through the gospel and works in us to be people of reconciliation using the gospel. Um, representing God in the world, um, declaring the spiritual victory that he's won for us. At Ephesians 4, we saw that um, we're called to live a life worthy of our calling in Christ. Uh, and that worthy living is a spirit-powered but personal responsibility, and it's community-focused. And uh, Ephesians 5 um, six ten, uh, Ephesians 5 all the way through 6 9 we see that uh, we're called to live our lives in submission to God and in mutual submission to one another in a way that honors Christ um, following Jesus' own example of submission and in Ephesians 6 10 to 24 that's the rest of the chapter today that we're going to be looking at and closing out the book we see that uh, if we're going to live in a manner worthy of our calling in Christ, then we're going to have to fight spiritual battles. We're going to have to fight spiritual battles. And so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and read Ephesians 6, 10 to the end of the chapter. So finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert, with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak, so that you also may know how I am and what I am doing. Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord will tell you everything. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. So that is Ephesians, and we have wrapped it up for the week. 
um, as we take a look at the outline of the book that we talked about and then looking at this last section here's what we're seeing is Ephesians 6 10 to 24 helps us to see um, what spiritual battle looks like for holy living and so you've got 6 10 to 13 and what we see is we need God's strength to fight spiritual battles holy living is not going to happen on accident um, we are fighting against spiritual forces, against Satan, against his demons, against our own sin, against the flesh. And so these are spiritual battles and it affects our everyday lives. And if we're called to live in a way that is worthy of the um, call of Christ, we need God's strength. We cannot fight on our own. Um, it says, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. And so that's constantly going to him, going to his word, living in his will. Um, he is the one who, with the Holy Spirit in us, empowers us for spiritual battles. Uh, 6, 14 to the first half of verse 18, we see that we need to intentionally fight spiritual battles. As I said, this isn't going to happen on accident. You're not going to just wake up and automatically do everything right. You are tempted. The world comes at you. Satan tries to tempt you. His demons come at you. What is happening in, in the spiritual realm is since Satan cannot take your salvation from you, he can fight to make you ineffective and fruitless. And that is not something that we can tolerate in our life. Um, as, as temptations come our way, as um, apathy against um, God's word, against um, the living a life in the community, um, meeting together on a regular basis, and prayer and the communion table, all against the life that we've been called to. As those things come at us, um, if we're not intentionally battling that, we'll succumb to that and be fruitless. And so we have to be aware of what's going on, watching, watching ourselves, watching what's going on in the community, watching out for one another. Um, and just what he gives us is, <coughs> excuse me, sort of this um, rundown of some of the tools that God has given us. Um, verse 14, truth. God's word is true. Uh, we don't judge reality based on our opinion, but on what God's word says it is. Um, we stand on his promises in scripture. Um, Verse 14 also talks about righteousness. We have the righteousness of Christ given to us, imputed. Um, when God looks at us, he sees our righteousness, but all the more we're actually called to work out our salvation. And so our righteousness becomes more and more practically lived out um, as we obey the word of God. Um, the gospel of peace, he says um, in verse 15, I always thought this was a weird verse. As you look at it in context, you can kind of see what he's saying. Um, as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Why shoes and why the gospel of peace? Because it, you are going to be a people who are called together to um, be reconcilers, to take the gospel, to make disciples of all nations, beginning in your hometown and throughout the world. And we are called to be people who are going. So, therefore, shoes um, that um, we are reconcilers, we are kingdom builders. We have to be a people ready to go, go to battle for ourselves, battle for others, to go with the gospel of peace and declare the peace that Christ has brought for us from God. Um, verse 16, he says, faith, faith in what God can do. We're not relying on our own strength or in our own ability, but that he is in us and he is with us. Faith in his power over sin in our life. Check out Romans 6 if, if you're wondering, is, is there any power that's been broken in terms of, I, I, I feel like I'm tempted, but I can't really help it. Well, God's word says you can. He says you must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. And that's Romans 6. Check that out. Um, faith. And your freedom from that sin um, and its control over you. Uh, the helmet of salvation, you are his. And Satan cannot bring a death blow to you. Um, you have to use that helmet of salvation as a promise. I am his. I am safe. I am redeemed. 
Um, you also you're going to use that sort of idea of a helmet to guard your thoughts, to guard your heart. Take captive every thought and make it obedient to Jesus Christ, Paul says. Um, verse 18, the sword of the Spirit plus power, and of the power of prayer. He says this, I'm going to read it. Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Um, the, the, the sword of the Spirit, in verse 17, um, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying at all times in the Spirit. Uh, we like to kind of disconnect that sometimes, but I think it's important to keep that together as a sentence. Um, you use the sword of the Spirit, God's Word, which has power. Power to save as it is preached, the gospel, and then the Holy Spirit awakens us to salvation and power to change our lives, to convict us of righteousness. That's what the Spirit uses in order to do these things. And so we use it, but we also pray the Word of God. We memorize it to help guard our hearts. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you, David says in the Psalms. Um, we use that to pray the will of God for ourselves and over the lives of people. So there, there's some tools that we've been given, some promises to fight spiritual battles. Um, verses 19 to 22, we see that we need to help each other fight spiritual battles. I'm not just fighting for me, I'm fighting for you. You shouldn't just fight for you. You should also fight for me. Um, and together we are strong because we are in him and God is working through all of us to bring all of us to that life of holiness. And so we are going to have to have spiritual battles if we are going to live lives worthy of Christ. And um, we're going to do that through prayer. We're going to do that through um walking with each other, counseling each other, encouraging and exhorting one another, um, being watchful over our own lives, over the lives of our friends, uh, over the lives of our congregations, submitting to the elders as they keep watch over us and guard the doctrine, um, filling our minds with the Word. So this is the book of Ephesians. Um, what we're going to see, or what we see at the end of this, is that um, if we're going to live in a manner worthy of our calling in Christ, then we're going to have to fight spiritual battles. And now we're equipped because we've read God's Word and we have it and we can study it. And I would encourage you to go back and do this. Um, Ephesians was one of the first books that I really sat down with and just read and read and read and read. And it, it changed the way I think. Um, and, and each passage or um, book that I do that, that I just repeatedly, repeatedly read and get those precepts in my mind and begin to live them out and stand on those promises, it, it, it really affects your ability for holy living, for honoring Christ. Um, we'll see you tomorrow and we'll begin a new book and our daily scripture reading.